Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and this is an Amazon Kindle Fire, which is a 7-inch tablet, sells for about $200, and comes with Google Android 2.3, and you can use it to read ebooks using the Kindle application, download music, movies, etc. But this version is actually running Google Android 4.1, which is uh, now available unofficially for the tablet. You need to root it, install a custom recovery, and then install this, and this is an early build. Uh, not everything works. There's no hardware accelerated video, for instance, so Netflix doesn't work. But with a little bit of elbow grease, you can get over some of the early hurdles and get Wi-Fi working, install the Google Play Store and other applications. And it uh, overall, it works pretty nicely. Um, this version of Android is similar to what you would see on the Google Nexus 7, which is another $199 device uh, that has a 7-inch screen. It's sort of a hybrid between the tablet and the... Uh, uh, smartphone user interface. It's designed for 7-inch devices. The Nexus 7, same price, has a higher resolution display and a faster processor, but if you already have a Kindle, uh, or for some reason would prefer a Kindle, it's nice to know that it can support Android 4.1 pretty well. Um, so in terms of sort of that hybrid interface here, you can see that in the home screen, uh, at least using the default app launcher, there's no portrait, or there's no landscape mode. There's a persistent row down here at the bottom for uh, icons that when you switch home screens they'll stay here. So we've got the web browser and the people app by default. Notifications come from the top instead of the bottom and that's how you would uh, lock your screen rotation, access settings and so forth. And you can see here that we are running Android 4.1. The Google Play Store works but you need to make sure that you download the version from uh, July 11th or later. And um, I'll show you that real quick here. So we can access apps, music, movies, and so forth. And I downloaded a couple of things. So it comes with the default Android web browser, but I went ahead and installed the Chrome web browser, which works pretty well. And I think I might have locked the screen orientation accidentally, so let's unlock that. And now we can see that the Chrome web browser is working. Another application I went ahead and installed is Angry Birds. Which of course you can play using the default uh, Amazon version of Android. You can play it using other versions as well. But I just wanted to show that it does work here. although I might not have the uh, same skill level as I did when this game first came out, and I played it more often. So that works. Um, recent applications menu. You can see that some of these things look sort of sideways in their icons, so I'm not quite sure what's going on there, but you can go ahead and swipe things out. Uh, the ES File Explorer I went ahead and downloaded. That works just fine. And it comes preloaded with certain applications if you install the latest G Apps package, including uh, Google Plus, Google Maps, Gmail, and so forth. Uh, Play Magazines, which is a relatively new feature. Um, and you can download magazines, periodicals, books, etc., as well as movies, TV shows, and other items from the, uh, the Google Play Store. So overall, uh, almost everything works. It does take a little bit of elbow grease, like I said, to get Wi-Fi working, though. Uh, but you can find instructions for how to do that at lilliputing.com. Also, some tips for getting Google Apps to work. Um, you will need to uh, change the, the bootloader and the custom recovery and the recovery application on the Kindle Fire in order to install Android 4.1. Uh, Amazon might not like that, but it's pretty difficult, I found, to completely turn this device into a useless brick. Uh, for the most part, uh, anything you do can be undone which is kind of a nice thing about a lot of Android devices, but definitely the uh, the Kindle Fire. So again, for $199, I'm not sure that I would recommend picking this up instead of a Google Nexus 7, but if you already have one and want to be able to run the latest Android software, you can. Um, Hashcode, the developer who first ported Android 4.1 to the Kindle Fire, is still working on it, so future builds might include working Wi-Fi out of the box, no intervention required from you, and, um, and some other information that might make it a little bit easier to use, and uh, possibly that HD video acceleration. So you might want to hold off a little while before installing this if you're, uh, if you're not that experienced in flashing custom ROMs. But for now, uh, everything, for the most part, does seem to work. This is Brad Linder with Lilliputing and a look at Android 4.1 on the Kindle Fire.